All right. Well, I wasn't expecting to make another episode until the usual episode I would have made tomorrow. But here we are. So welcome back to the podcast, everybody. Episode 60 now. Another surprise episode of sorts. As usual, thank you to everybody uh, who supports me and everything. Anybody who wants to support the podcast and the channel or just allow me to continue to exist in real life. PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and in the top 10 comments. So basically, you know, the week was just passing by, was just, you know, letting data get released bit by bit, collecting it for the usual episode, unless, like the uh, the major Gulf shutdown and uh, the Iraq going up to a 7 million thing, unless, you know, stuff like that comes, something that's just too interesting uh, to resist happens, then, you know, you, you just got to have a surprise episode for it. So... So, I, you know, was checking the oil and gas journal like I do every day, um, at least every weekday, and up comes this thing where, uh, you know, ev everyone's, everyone's just falling for it again. They're falling for the same old trick, the, the same old delusional false hope, or I don't know if it's technically a hope, but the delusional false expectation of peak demand. In this case, uh, they don't think it's going to be a peak. Uh, they think it's it's going to be a plateau. And, uh, you know, the whole 2020 situation, the 2020 medical situation, is going to uh, be the, the initial trigger for it. And you remember at the start of the year, before everything uh, started to fall apart, oil demand had made it up to 102 million barrels per day and was neck and neck with oil production. And it fell all the way down to about 73 in the middle of April at the height of the 2020 situation. And then it started to spring right back up after that as uh, all the shutdowns and everything started going away. And as of the second week of August, I don't remember the particular date, uh, but as of sometime in the second week of August this month, it was already back up to 93.4 million barrels per day. And uh, OPEC, I believe, uh, was expecting it to get up to about 96 around the end of September. Well, IHS, I don't even know who they are, but uh, IHS uh, believes that, no, it's not going to do that. It's it's going to flatten out at 95 million barrels a day, and uh, it's, it's not going to go above that. It's going to stay 95, and it's going to plateau off. Are we really falling for this again? I mean, we already had the, uh, the ridiculous peak demand stuff, where, uh, you know, people thought it was going to actually peak and then start dropping rapidly because of electric vehicles. Like, they, people were, like, assuming really ridiculous stuff. Like, by 2023, only three years from now, like, half of all new vehicle sales would only be electric vehicles. And then other stuff, like, by 2035 or 2040, half the vehicles in the world would, uh, at that time, would all be electric vehicles. And uh, let's let's not even get started on the whole electric airplanes and electric cargo ships nonsense. But uh, another another group is is falling for the same old uh, the same old false hope, the same old trick. Just like humanity constantly trying to fall for the uh, the whole fusion power hope thing. But uh, yeah, they're they're falling for the whole peak demand and blah blah blah. It's 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 gonna peak. And, you know, blah, 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 it's, it's going to plateau out at 95 million barrels a day. And uh, it's, it's, it's not really going to go back above that. And, you know, uh, stuff's going to change. It's, stuff's going to adapt as, as we head into the new world. No. No, it's not. No, it ain't. That isn't how it works. Okay? Demand, oil demand, oil consumption has always been destined for one trajectory. It is going to follow production wherever production goes. Or rather, it's going to follow loosely production capability wherever it goes. Because you're always going to have things like, you know, the OPEC production cuts and whatnot. But it has always been and is always going to follow oil production. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, obviously, but oil production itself is going to peak. Yes, obviously as is the production of any finite resource. And we can debate the timing of that elsewhere. Uh, I already did some math and prediction layouts for that in a different video. I'll put a link in the uh, the corner and in the, the pinned comment and everything. 
So you can you can go watch that video. I actually have like graphs and charts, and uh, we did we already did that math and whatnot. Granted, uh, this whole uh, demand collapse that's happened this year has probably postponed that another year or two into the future from when it originally would have been. But uh, yeah, within the next 10 to 15 years, almost definitely, um, whether it plateaus for a little bit uh, and thus then allows demand to uh, semi-plateau with it, granted that's not really what it's going to do. It's going to overshoot and then uh, drop as the, uh, the fuel prices rise. But uh, whether it uh, plateaus for a little bit or whether production actually starts a uh, decent terminal decline right away, we don't know. But uh, either way, yes, uh, so demand is inevitably going to peak when production peaks because it, it doesn't have any other choice but to uh, follow production downward because if there's not enough oil to meet the demand, then the demand or the consumption then has to drop because you can't consume nothing in place of something. But uh, these, these expectations, the whole peak demand thing is always, always like just completely ignores like huge portions of the world basically uh you know it's 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 kind of similar to all the like climate agreements and everything like it, it just waves a hand off at the uh at the entire third world and and second world basically countries that are rising towards first world status and countries that are rising out of third world status into at least temporarily second world status Okay, I, I get, I get that you know, like first world nations eventually do uh, sort of level out in their consumption and even drop a bit as uh, they adopt a you know a lot of like more fuel efficient vehicles and stuff. But for for rising nations, for third world and second world nations, the them expanding their living standards or elevating their living standards, them expanding uh, their economies that that comes along with increased oil consumption as a literal unavoidable inevitability that's that the two are too intertwined so like what are you gonna do if if this is your expectation are are, are you like you know the whole climate agreement kind of stuff are you just gonna like turn to the whole third world and second world and be like yeah okay we know you guys are you know we know most of your population still living in squalor and despondent poverty but uh could could you guys just stop rising could you stop increasing your living standards for us you know cuz uh you're just you're consuming too much stuff i know we're already consuming like 20 million barrels a day but could you guys just you know could you stop at you know your little 100,000 barrels a day that'd be really nice could you guys do that please you you're just you're going to cause so much pollution and uh we're already, you know, causing enough, and uh, we we want to be able to keep doing ours, but but not have the numbers go up anymore. So we need you guys to stop and just keep living in despondent poverty. Do you think they're all just going to agree to that? Because the answer, if you can't figure it out, is no. They are going to, as long as that opportunity still exists for the next ten to fifteen years or so maybe only five, but probably still 10 to 15, as long as that opportunity is still there, every nation below first world living standards is going to still keep trying to climb to first world living standards. Because get this, people don't like low living standards and no one's going to just stop pursuing their dreams so that, you know, you can keep your prices low or so that your prediction can be true. So no, demand is not going to plateau out in the next couple of weeks at 95 million barrels a day and, and then just stop there. And if anyone's still on the whole, like, uh, you know, EV train of like actual peak demand, peak demand, um, not tied to peak production, that's not going to happen either. Demand will peak, like, like we've just said, it will peak when production peaks and it will it will tumble right down with it actually it'll crash and jump like down and up uh, a little bit harsher in a much more jagged line than the production will uh because you know demand is is a lot more price based but uh it it will peak and tumble 
when production does. Because that is its only destiny, is, is to follow production like a little puppy dog. But, okay, that's it uh, for the out-of-character intense episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all for sticking around and listening. Uh, again, if you want to support the channel and everything, or uh, just help me continue my existence, then PayPal and Patreon are down in the description below and in the top pin comments. Along with links to uh, the the peak oil, like, graphs and dates video with uh, projections and everything. But no matter what, may God protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.